In this video, I'm going to show you how to simulate gravity in three different ways. The first way is going to be for beginners, then intermediate coders, and then finally I'm going to show you the most advanced way I could think of simulating gravity or making a character jump up and down. Without going too deep into the physics of it, we have to figure out what's actually happening when something or someone jumps up, so away from the earth. So I've enlisted the help of this pig to do that. So when this pig jumps up, what's happening is that it's moving away from the earth fast and that speed is slowing down until it reaches its peak and it stops and then it starts dropping faster and faster and faster and faster. So the way that I'm gonna to try to simulate this in code is I'm gonna have my pig move a greater distance at the beginning and move less and less and less as it goes further up. And then it's gonna go in the opposite direction and speed up, so it's gonna move further down the y-axis over time. So let's start this project by first changing the sprite that we're looking at, because I don't wanna use the default cat sprite. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom right and I'm gonna select choose a sprite. And let's look at what animals they have. Uh, and let's see if they have a pig. Uh, I don't see one. So you know what? I think I'm going to use this squirrel instead. The squirrel will be funnier anyway. So I'm going to use the squirrel sprite as the one that I'm going to make jump up and down. And let's remove the original sprite one that starts off every project. Okay, so now that I have my squirrel, I have to remember what I just described a second ago. So I want my squirrel to move up or jump up and move a greater distance at the beginning than at the end. So every every so often, it should basically decrease the amount of the amount of distance it um it moves along the along the y axis. So what I want to do is I'm going to change the y. Let's say by let's let's go by I don't know 25. Let's say so it's gonna its y axis it's gonna first move along the y axis 25 pixels. And then the second time, or I mean, the second unit of time that I'm gonna be looking at, it's gonna move up by, let's say 20. Then it's gonna move up by 15. Then it's gonna go up by 10. And then let's do five. And finally, instead of doing zero, because changing Y by zero just means it's not gonna move, let's change Y by, um, let's say one. So it goes up just a tiny little bit at the end before it stops and works its way back down. So let's test this out first, just to make sure that it works. So I'm gonna test it out by, well, actually let's, let's not zoom in. Let's just uh, zoom in over here so that it's a little bit bigger and a little bit easier to see, I'm gonna click on the script and see if that works. So moment of truth here. And it just goes up all the way uh, in one shot. So what's happening is that my computer is running all of these commands really quickly. So I have to kind of slow them down. And I'm gonna do that by, um, by adding a weight block. So if I go over to the control palette and add a weight block in between each of these change Y, it's gonna be a little bit more obvious that, um, that our squirrel is kind of moving up and moving up less and less each time, uh, each by every second that passes. Okay, so let's, uh, let's try this again. Let's click on the script. Let me drag my squirrel down here. Then let's click on this script. And as you can see the squirrel moving up, it's moving up a shorter and shorter distance each time until it will reverse. Um, but that was way too slow. So let's speed that up. Um, instead of one second, let's do uh, 0.1 seconds. So we're just going to add, we're going to make this a tenth of a second that uh, that scratch is going to wait in between each step. And so that should look a lot faster. I'm going to drag my scroll down here. I'm going to click on the script. And there we go. My scroll moved up and slowed down as it got to the top. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to go in the reverse direction. So really what I should do is make a duplicate of all of this code and basically just bring it back over. So I don't really need to have another weight block because it doesn't need to wait uh, two tenths of a second. I can just throw that away and just bring all of these blocks down to the bottom over here. So I'm just gonna do that very, very quickly. And there we go. Uh, so now let's test this out. Let me bring my squirrel down here. And when I click on the script to run it, we should see the squirrel go up and down. And that is not what we see. We see the squirrel go up two times. 
So what's happening is, let's think, it's just going up. So it's just moving up in the positive direction along the Y axis. We have to make sure we go in the opposite direction. We have to go down. So we have to change the Y axis by a negative number. Um, so I guess on the way down, instead of changing it by one, we just add a negative number or make it negative so that it goes in the opposite direction, equal but opposite direction as it initially did. So let's do that. Let's make sure that we have a negative number in front of all of these bottom ones. And you know what we can do? We could also tie this to an event. We could tie this to the space key being pressed. So that way I don't have to click on the, 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 the script every single time. I could just press the space key and we should see our squirrel jump up and then come right back down. So here we go. And that looks pretty good. Actually that squirrel, it looks like it can jump. It finally learned how to jump. Um, as most squirrels do know how to do. So this works, but it's not very efficient. If you look at our code, we see that there's a lot of repetition. And the thing about coding and computer science is we really don't want to repeat ourselves. As, as best we can, we want to make sure that our code isn't repetitive. Uh, because usually when you see repetition, there's probably a better way of doing things. So I'm going to have to think outside the box and come up with a better solution for repeating this code. And notice that I keep saying repeat or repetition. So that probably means that I should use a loop. So let me go over to the control palette and figure out how I can use a repeat block to kind of accomplish the same things uh, that I'm doing over here, maybe with less blocks of code. Okay, so let me, let me think. We are starting at 25 and we're decreasing by five every single time up until here, up until this point. So at that point, we actually change Y by, by four instead of five. So maybe what I could do to kind of change, uh, change Y by five every single time is we could increase all of these, all of the change Y by, um, by one. So if we change it by one, then we could just change it by, change the value by negative five eventually. Uh, sorry, I don't know what I'm doing over here. I'm just adding a six everywhere. Um, so let me just undo what I did. So I'm, I'm undoing by clicking or pressing Command Z or Control Z if you're using Windows. And I'm just gonna add one to each of these. So 15 is gonna become 16, 20 is going to become 21, and 25 is gonna become 26. And the reason I'm doing that is because I wanna make it the math a little bit easier. I wanna make it so I could just decrease by five every single time and end up at one. Otherwise, I'm going to be decreasing by five. And then on the last one, on the last one, I have to change it by four, which is going to get a little bit weird in the code. So I'm just going to make my life a little bit easier and increase everything else by one so that I can decrease it by five and it'll get to one uh, correctly. And if that was confusing, then, uh, then just ignore me. This is a little bit more advanced. Now we're trying to solve the problem using a loop, even though we were able to do it kind of like in the brute, for brute force way, uh, just now, but let's let's think now. How can I how can I change this value programmatically? Because I can't just click and drag this in here because it doesn't it won't change anything. Um, so this this looks like a good job or a good place to use a variable. And the reason for that, the reason I want to use a variable, is because a variable will allow us to store data, which in this case is going to be the distance that I want to change y by. So I'm going to go over to the variables palette um, and I'm going to make a variable and I'm going to name it exactly what I just said. The distance to change Y by and let's just let's just leave it at that. And I know that looks a little bit kind of verbose in that I'm using a lot of words here, but it's very, very easy to understand what this variable is going to store. So this variable is going to store a number. We're going to store data in it. So we want to set it at the beginning of, of all of this. So when I, when I click on the space key, I want to make sure that we set the distance to change Y by to 26, because that is what this script over here starts with. So it starts at 26 and then it changes by, by five. So it's decreasing by five every single time. So uh, to do that, we're going to change the Y by, uh, let's see, by negative five. Actually, no, 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 hold on. That's not what I wanna do. I wanna change Y by that value. 
Sorry, I'm, I'm getting a little bit mixed up here. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that Y changes by this distance, the distance to change Y by. So right now it's going to be 26. And then what I want to do then is I want to make sure that my variable, I change the value of that variable by negative five. So th this is where, this is what I was, I was kind of mixing up just, just now. There's a couple of changes that are going to happen. One is I'm going to change the, uh, I'm going to change the Y position of the sprite. And the second thing I have to change is how much we're going to move the next time. So let's see how many times we should repeat this. Let's see. So it was uh, one time gets us to 21, two times gets us to 16, three times gets us to 11, four times gets us to six, and five times gets us down to one. So we're just going to repeat this five times. Okay. And I'm going to connect this. And now I've basically simplified this code into these few lines of code. So now if I press the space key, the squirrel is just going to move up because we didn't do the functionality for coming right back down. So let me press the space key and we see that it is uh, moving really quickly actually. Uh, so I want to just bring in my weight block. I forgot to include my weight block in here and we want to make sure that we wait uh, a tenth of a second um, in between each of these steps. So I'm going to drag my squirrel right back down and I'm going to press the space key just to see that happen again. So there we go, our squirrel moves up and moves up by less and less each time. So now what we have to do is we have to go all the way back down. We have to, we have to go in the other direction. So it's going to look very similar to this. I could just kind of like repeat this code. Uh, so I'm going to duplicate this and let me just move this over. And instead over here, we're going to start, we're going to set it or start it at negative one and then go down by negative five each time. So this is going to look very similar. So let me just connect it and, and then we'll think about uh, whether or not there's a better way to do this. Okay, so now I think this should work. Uh, let's press the space key and see if it goes up and then comes right back down. It goes up and it comes down, but it doesn't look like it goes down uh, as many times as it should. Maybe we need to go down one more time. So I'm going to repeat the bottom one uh, one more time, so six. So when I press the space key, let me make sure I could see that the squirrel is going back to the state, the same starting position, go up and come right back down. And that is exactly right. So, Hmm, how can we do this? What can we do? Because as I just mentioned, we really shouldn't be repeating code. And when I look at the code right now, I see like, I see repetition and I don't really want to see that. Um, so let's think. Honestly, it, it's going to be really difficult with the values that we chose. Uh, well, the values that I chose, uh, starting at 26, going down by five every single time. And then, um, and then, you know, going down to one and then starting at negative one on the other side, uh, when we get to the negatives, it's going to be really difficult to code that. Um, this is going to, this is getting really advanced now. So I'm going to recommend that if you understand this much, or even if you understand the original way of doing things by changing the Y a certain amount of changing the Y a certain, um, by a certain value, I'm just noticing also this should be, uh, instead of negative five, it should be negative six and so on. Negative 10, sorry, it should be negative 11, negative 16 negative 21 and then negative 26. So I, I noticed that I missed that the first time. So this should, uh, that should work correctly. Now uh, I was off by one, but with the, uh, with my new solution here, it is, it is less code, but there's still repetition and I don't like it. So that means that, there, that there's a better way to do it. So I'm actually going to set this aside and oops, I think I just deleted it, but <laughs> let me just undo that. And I'm going to set it aside and come up with different values that I could use to make this a little bit easier uh, and basically simplify it. So we could still, we could still start at 26 or jump by start at the start the initial jump at 26. So I can still do that. So we could still use this, uh, the set change distance to Y by uh, 26, but instead of doing negative five and then like having like a weird, a weird thing happen at one in the negative one. Let's just, you know, decrease it by two every single time. 
So instead of uh, instead of doing negative five, and the reason I'm going to do two is because I'm just going to count by twos, and and we won't have that weirdness. Like it will go down to zero, but then it'll go down to negative two, then negative uh, four, then negative six, and so on. Uh, so let's change the variable. Let's uh, change the distance or the the amount to jump by by uh, by negative two, and we're going to repeat that a bunch of times. Um, now, how many times would we have to repeat that? Um, I mean, I guess I guess I could try guessing how many times to repeat. Let me let me think about this for a second. So then, in, actually, instead of using a repeat block, which I could do, I think I could use a repeat until block. So as I mentioned, this is going to become a little bit more advanced, and I'm gonna have to figure out when I should stop, uh, you know, going back down. Uh, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the Y by the distance that the Y should should decrease by. So that is the jump distance. And every single time I do this, I'm going to increase that distance or increase the amount that I'm going to change that distance by by negative two. So every single iteration, it's it's you know going up or going down a bunch more. Uh, and so th the way that it will work is that, you know, for the first for the first few times, it's going to go from 26 down to 24 down, and so on. And so it'll be positive, but then it'll get below zero, so it'll become negative, so it'll come back down on its own. And I think that'll be a much better way of doing this. But I got to figure out when I should stop. So I should repeat this. Um, let's see. Maybe maybe until the distance becomes a certain value. So. Once it increases to a certain value, we could check to see um, if it equals, specifically equals, um, let's see, 26. Maybe when it gets down to 20, would it be negative 24? And that will be the last one. Let's see if this works. So I'm going to place my squirrel down here. I'm going to press the space key and let's see if it ends up at the same spot. So it looks like it, uh, it did not. So the, the, the issue might be because, hmm, maybe instead of going down to negative 24, I should do it until it equals negative 28, because that'll be two less than 26. So at that point, it should come back down to the original starting position. So let me try that. I think uh, 28 might be the, the value, just because it has to be uh, two less than the negative value of what we started at. Uh, and I think, I think if my math is correct and like the way I'm thinking about it is correct, then this might work. And moment of truth here, jump up and it comes right back down to exactly where, where it started. So this is another way of doing it, a much more efficient, much shorter way of doing it, but also much more difficult way of, uh, of doing this. So this is, um, this is not for the faint of heart. This is quite a bit more advanced and not easy. So, you know, if, if you weren't able to think about this, um, don't worry because this is difficult, but this would work and this would be probably the most efficient way because uh, as of right now, I can't think of another way um, of making this a little bit more efficient. But um, if I don't want the character to jump as high, we could start it at, you know, we could do 16 and go all the way down to negative 18. So at that point, it should it should uh, reach its original starting position. So let's uh, let's press the space key, and the squirrel will jump a much shorter distance, but comes right back down, and it looks it looks more natural, it looks more realistic. Now this is just the way that I've thought about this. So if you have a better suggestion or a better idea of how to simulate gravity. Um, please leave a comment below and let us know how you did it. Let us know how you did it maybe in less lines of code or maybe with a, a better way of thinking about this because I'd, I'd love to see other ways of doing this. And with that, I'd like to thank you for uh, watching this video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>